Morning San Antonio starts right now. Well, San Antonio got some rain overnight, uh, quite a bit in some places, and we're not quite done yet. Justin Horn is tracking the latest developments and an update on that approaching cold front. We'll check with him in just a few minutes. Good morning to you. Everybody, it is Wednesday. It is September 9th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. It was kind of odd driving into work and having all that rain this morning. Yeah, we had actually mm -hmm. slowed down on our way in very early this morning, and I heard some more rain on the rooftop here downtown just a short time ago. So it continues, and we'll check in with Justin in just a bit. Uh, the parade of amazing kids stepping up during the pandemic continues with an 11 year old boy in Hampton, Virginia. So cool to hear his story. So he donates over 22,000 diapers to single moms through a lemonade stand. 11 year old Cartier Carey spent his summer at his lemonade stand there in Southern Virginia, raising money to buy diapers, wipes and other supplies for parents in need during the pandemic. So Cartier told ABC News that he noticed a shortage of diapers in stores during the pandemic and he wanted to help. He said people are having babies, so I should help them afford diapers. He started a lemonade stand and made about $4,500 in the first month. The stand also served as a diaper drive where people could donate diapers. And on his first day back to virtual school, Cartier is still at hard at work loading up a truck with more than 22,000 donated diapers. Mm -hmm. Although he's back in school now, Cartier told World News Tonight that he will continue his mission. He and his mom started a nonprofit to help other kids get involved in the initiative, and Cartier said it is inspiration is Kobe Bryant because the late basketball player inspired him to be great and work hard. And I'm sure that Cartier is inspiring other people now with all his hard work. Sure hope so. Right now, let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. Wildfires spreading on the West Coast overnight. One fire is burning an area the size of New York's Central Park every half hour. We've got fires burning from in the north part of the state all the way to the Mexican border. A major development in the race to develop a COVID-19 vaccine. One of the leading vaccine trials is now on hold because of an unexplained illness raising safety concerns. Salvation Army San Antonio raising funds for a new truck after one crashed on the way to assist folks over in Louisiana. That truck was heavily damaged in a blowout on I-10 over there. You can find a link to donate right now at ksat.com. In the race for the White House, President Trump and Joe Biden are neck and neck in Florida. A new poll shows they're tied at 48% among likely voters in the crucial battleground state. Those educational apps your child is playing with could be violating your preschooler's privacy. A new study found that 67% of apps played by children collected data, including location information. 29 million Americans are filing for unemployment benefits. Tech companies like Google and IBM are offering good paying jobs with no college degree required. The pandemic is also fueling job growth at companies like Walmart, Lowe's and Instacart. Researchers looked at how people sleep at night and how much money they make. They found so-called free fallers make the most cash. Mm -hmm. That's when you sleep with your arms and legs stretched out. Number two on the list, the soldier arms down, legs straight. But low earners prefer to sleep in the fetal position. Planning is already underway for the traditional Christmas decorating of the White House. As they say, anything can happen on live TV. But he says it certainly drives up production costs. She's from Global News in Canada. She tweeted the video with a tip, be careful where you stand. Nine week old Rowley and was trying to get some shut eye during the day, but just couldn't find the right spot. Slowly, but surely he manages to wiggle himself right off the ledge. He settled for the floor, always a good option as well. <laughs> Steph, we finally found our spirit animal. I think so. <laughs> we didn't miss a beat. <laughs> and ready for a nap, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, feeling like that early in the morning, of course. <laughs> Let's go outside with live cam at a welcome site. We have rain showers in the area. We just don't want any severe weather in the form of flash flooding. That's right. We've, we've had a few warnings this morning, but mostly uh, just some good rain here around San Antonio and some good napping weather uh, for the dogs too. Uh, looking at the visible satellite and radar, you can see where some of the rain is now moving up into parts of the hill country. We've also got some pretty heavy rain off to the west, Del Rio over to Rock Springs. This is along a slow moving front, which will continue east today. It's gonna kick up more showers and storms going forward. Well, looking a little bit closer here in San Antonio, we've had a few passing showers just within the last hour, a few over downtown, one moving there in across the northeast side of town. That's lifting north pretty quickly, and there on top of your screen, also seeing some pretty heavy rain around Bernie at this hour, uh, zooming out some. We have uh, the warnings here posted for you. 
And we've got three at the moment. Flash flood warnings for uh, Blanco, Comal, Gillespie, and Kendall County. That's going to go for about another hour or so. And then a flash flood warning for uh, Bastrop, Caldwell, Hayes, and Travis County. That's up towards Austin. That's going to go until 1045. And then out west uh, until 11 o'clock for Edwards and Valverde counties. And that's where some of that heavy rain is falling at this hour. Flash flood watches are in effect. This does include San Antonio and the Hill Country. This is going to go through 1 p.m tomorrow and the forecast for today calls for about a 70 percent chance of rain so good chances especially later today temperatures will be in the mid 80s but cooler tomorrow potentially behind that front we'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes guys thank you justin transkai right now looking at i-10 and hurman no problems to report there but uh, we do have an update on that major incident from earlier this morning it is our top story this morning Yes, it is. A portion of Loop 1604 on the north side remains closed this morning due to that major accident. San Antonio police confirm one person was killed in the crash. Happened around 6 this morning in the westbound lanes of Loop 1604 near Stone Oak Parkway uh, near Highway 281. Police still don't know what caused that crash, but they are asking drivers to avoid the area if possible. We're going to bring you an update as soon as we have one. Westbound lanes are affected and have been for hours now. Police are also investigating another deadly crash, this one involving a motorcycle. This one happened just before 10 last night on the northeast side. Police say a driver in a minivan turned into a subdivision in the 15,000 block of Nacogdoches Road, and then the motorcycle crashed into them. Investigators believe the motorcyclist was speeding at the time. Please tell us the uh, rider was ejected off the bike, pronounced that at the scene right now. We're still waiting to learn his identity. We're also waiting to learn the name of the woman killed during a shooting on the east side overnight. Uh, please tell us another woman was also shot and is recovering at a hospital this morning. This all happened just after midnight in the 500 block of Ferris. Investigators believe the women were among a group of people hanging outside a home when someone started shooting. Officers found shell casings from two different weapons at the scene and a gun behind a different home. Police say people at the scene were not telling them much and the case remains under investigation. Well, a heads up for people up in Bernie in Kendall County. Sheriff's Office says they'll be conducting a large joint training exercise today. The training started around 8 this morning and it's expected to continue until 5 this afternoon. It's happening in the 1000 block of East Blanco Road. People will notice an increase in law enforcement, fire and emergency medical services in that area. Sheriff's Office says they'll be teaming up with neighboring agencies for the training so people will see patrol vehicles from other jurisdictions. They're concentrated in that part of Bernie, so be advised. Everything's okay. And in your morning headlines, President Donald Trump has been nominated for a prestigious award. Talk about a mail dump and a boy dangles by his head five stories up. David Sears is back. It's good to have you back under one roof with us. Glad to be back. And this kid just like his head was stuck in these bars and that's how he was oh, no. hanging we, out the window. We got to see this. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Just a second. He's okay. That's why it's good stuff. President Donald Trump has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Trump nominated by a member of the Norwegian Parliament for the peace agreement between the United Arab Emirates and Israel, the two countries agreeing to normalize relations. Tybrig Yeti, who nominated Trump, said he's not a Trump supporter, but, quote, Donald Trump meets the criteria, no matter how he acts at home or what he says in press conferences. All right, watch quick. Watch quick. Watch quick. Did you see that? Yeah, strange story from Russia continues. Two people dressed in running suits, masks, went into this office and then threw some kind of chemical on the floor. It was a bottle of yellow liquid, according to a witness. Two people got sick. They were dizzy, had convulsions. They had to be taken to the hospital. They were volunteer members of Alexei Novani's Russian opposition party. Remember, he's the one who was poisoned on a flight from Moscow and was just taken out of a medically induced coma on Monday. If you are waiting for a letter from California, it may take a few days longer. That's a budget rental truck parked at the lot of a spa in Glendale, California. And yes, those are mailbags being tossed out of the truck. We counted over 30 bags of mail getting thrown out of the back of that truck, but it was a big truck, so there could have been more. This is surveillance video. The owner of the spa said she went out and looked at the bags. They were filled up with unopened envelopes and packages. The Postal Service says that was a contractor doing the tossing, not an employee. The Postal Inspector is investigating. That mail will go through a verification process, and then the pieces they can will get delivered. All right, let's head to China. This is a six-year-old dangling from a window five stories up. His head caught in those iron bars. 
Rescue workers had to hold on to the child from outside the window while other workers and his father were inside. They helped hold the boy and they cut those bars. It took 10 minutes, but they finally freed him. Everybody's okay, even the six year old. That's an experience. Yeah, that's how about show and tell at school on that one. And finally, from the whoa category, yes, that right there is a shark fin. Just a few yards from shore. This is off the coast of Cape Cod. Aaron and Brad Cullis were the ones taking the video of Jaws. Brad was actually in the water in his kayak when the shark showed up. His wife started taking the video and then she took some pictures. She even stepped into the water a little ways. The friend the couple was with was in his kayak. He was pretty oblivious to what was happening at first. And one of my other friends who was getting into his kayak, he had just jumped in his kayak just off the beach, probably 10 feet off the beach. He didn't even notice, but when I looked over, there was a fin probably two feet from him. And um, I remember saying, Don, is that a shark? And I think he looked up and got all confused and startled <laughs> at the same time, you know, and, and quickly backed out. I guess so. Shark only in three or four feet of water. It was about 15 feet long, which is about as long as your kayak. There were some seals hanging out on a sandbar, but apparently a shark didn't seem too interested since there were humans nearby. Oh, no. How you know. Scary. Looks like a scene just like yeah. in Jaws. How long is a is kayak? About 15 feet, right? Typical ones run about 10 to 12. 10 to 12. So, yeah, well, this so this was, was a little bigger. So if oh. those kayaks are a little bit, ooh. It yeah. almost looks fake just because it's so close to the shoreline. <laughs> like know. someone's playing a prank or something, but, but not it's very, not. Yeah, that's not very far. I mean, you know, you I mean, wade in that much water. Ooh. Well, yeah, and considering <laughs> you were talking about depth, I mean, it, it is shockingly close to shore yeah. for considering how it's big like, that, that shark is. That dude's looking for lunch. Mm -hmm. Nobody's obliging. So that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, so they're going to need a bigger boat. They're going to need a bigger kayak. I think so. Thank you, David. It's good to see you back. Right now we're at 909, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. The Beatles wrote about strawberry fields forever, and now a strawberry farmer in Wisconsin creating sunflower fields forever. How many flowers he planted in hopes of making people happy. A San Antonio high school teacher says administration criticized her after she opted to go on medical leave amid the pandemic. How the district is responding to this latest defenders investigation later in the newscast. We are only 55 days away from Election Day and you only have a few more weeks to register. Eric Hernandez joins us to break down what you need to know next. And welcome back. It's 913. Are you registered to vote? And if you're unsure how to, we have you covered on KSET.com. Eric Hernandez joining us live from home with details on how to get ready for the 2020 general election. Good morning, Erica. Hey guys, good morning. Well, election day is coming up. And if you want to cast your ballot, you need to register by October 5th. So first, let's talk about how you can find out if you are already registered. In the Vote 2020 section on KSAT.com, go to the Register to Vote article. Inside, there is a link that will help you figure out if you are registered by filling out some criteria, like your date of birth, driver's license number, or part of your address. You will then get a pop-up that tells you your registration status. If you are not registered, you can fill out a voter registration application online, print it out, and mail it to the voter registrar in your county. Other options is register in person at your county voter registration office, or you can request a postage paid application from your voter registrar by filling out an online form. Now, we've made this really easy to find everything you need in one place on KSAT.com. Just click on the links that you need to get the information you want within this article. Now, you won't need your voter registration card when you vote, but you will need a valid form of identification to vote in Texas. Now, key dates to remember. Voting registration deadline is October 5th. Early voting starts on October 13th and runs through October 30th. And election day is November 3rd. All this, again, can be found in the Vote 2020 section on KSAT.com. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Erica. Bye, we'll see you later. Justin's here with us now. We have some showers in the area, and uh, look at all that activity popping up over now on the border of Texas and Mexico. Yeah, that's an area marker we're going to be watching real closely next few hours. That is in advance of that cold front we've been talking about for several days now. It's, it's slow moving. It's very slowly easing off to the east. But it's out ahead of it where we're expecting more development today. We are still seeing some showers and storms around San Antonio, too. We saw some uh, good heavy rain earlier and a little closer look here at town. Uh, a little shower, a heavier shower moved through the uh, western side of Bear County there up through Holotus and is now moving up between uh, Bernie and Comfort. Some heavy rain there 
you may see a few lightning strikes. We've had some reports of some flooding, two to four inches in some localized spots. And as we uh, look east, also some heavy rain around San Marcos at this hour, just to the east of New Braunfels. Everything is lifting off to the north. And then uh, some rain there around Seguin as well. And we do have some warnings, uh, some flash flood warnings that are also still in effect that uh, include uh, Seguin, Guadalupe County. Actually, it got taken out, uh, but it is extending to the north along I-35. That's going to go for uh, about another hour and a half or so up there along I-35. And we still have some warnings for uh, Gillespie County. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's going to go until 10 o'clock. Then we have some warnings out west that will go until 11 o'clock. So just goes to show you that uh, we have some spots that are, are seeing some flooding. Again, two to four inches is uh, what we've seen so far. We could add to that today. Uh, looking at the future cast, we're expecting that the showers and storms stay in place. This is around noontime. Uh, the best chance is still going to be out west along that front. And then as we get towards 5 o'clock, still some widespread rain. And this front slowly works its way towards the I-35 corridor tonight. It's along that front where uh, you'll see the, the rain sort of concentrate. And then tomorrow morning, we still got some showers and storms lingering around. And then by tomorrow afternoon, we'll see the rain chances start to come down a bit. Uh, looking at uh, what we got as far as watches go, flash flood watch in effect. This goes through 1 p.m. tomorrow. Basically, I-35 to the west and Highway 90 to the north. That's the area that we're really going to have to watch uh, through tonight. And the rainfall potential through Saturday, we're talking uh, 3 to 5 inches here, potentially in spots. Uh, maybe some localized numbers higher than that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but it's... Uh, up and down the I-35 corridor here where we're talking maybe one to two inches, maybe close to three. I think I'm okay right now. We'll try to power through here. Uh, looking outside, we've got uh, 77 degrees. Thanks, Mark, by the way. Uh, 78 uh, Port SA, 76 Stinson, and we've got east southeasterly winds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Big picture here, you see the rain lifting north, a few showers out ahead, and there's that more solid line to the west. And we'll uh, zoom out some, and that line, by the way, extends from Wichita Falls all the way back down to Del Rio. And then extreme northwestern parts of the Panhandle. There is some snow flying this morning. Gives you an idea of just how cold this air mass is. 37 right now in Amarillo, <clears throat> 52 Wichita Falls, and then 70s and 80s out ahead of this front. We'll zoom in a little bit closer, and you can see almost exactly where that front is. 61 right now in Sonora, 75 in Junction, 59 now in Brady. And this will continue to progress east. When we're talking temperatures here, still some 80s today, but as we get into tomorrow, we should see those numbers drop off a little bit, probably some 70s here in San Antonio and then some cooler numbers off to the west. 70% chance of rain <clears throat> temperatures in the mid 80s and then look for a 77 Thursday, 40% chance of rain. That'll be our coolest day and then some slight chances Friday, Saturday and then some better chances once again as we get into Sunday and Monday with some mostly cloudy skies. Um, Mark with the water saving the day. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And we'll, uh, we'll toss it back to you guys. We'll keep you updated through the day, by the way. All right. Don't forget, we have a junior meteorologist, Justin. Oh, yes. Junior meteorologist. How can I forget? Uh, this is Adnan. He is uh, he, talking about last week's weather. Obviously, we have a stockpile here. Uh, and, and take a listen. He's talking about the heat. Hello. I'm Adnan. It's one, today is 102 degrees. Outside is good for swimming. It was hot. Oh, it was. You know, last week when he did this, it absolutely was hot. It was perfect for swimming. Not so much the case today, but uh, right. we appreciate the forecast nonetheless. You did a great job. And we've got several more lined up. I'm excited about this. Even though school has started, yeah. we still got a lot of junior meteorologists, which is great. And by the way, you can still submit some videos online, ksat.com, guys. All right, Justin, go get a drink. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever kind you want. Start with the water. Right now, 920, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a 100-year-old man breaking records underwater for the third time. The details on what he's doing and his secret to living a long and healthy life. That's next. 923, a 100-year-old man in Illinois has broken a world record for scuba diving. Scuba diving, not once, not twice, but three times. So Bill Lambert dove into the record books this past Labor Day. So take a look. Here's Lambert. Started diving at age 98. Now he's the world's oldest scuba diver. His coach says scuba diving is great for seniors since exercising in the water is good for circulation. As for breaking the record, it's something that even his daughter still struggles to wrap her head around. 
every step of the way it was like what what and he goes yeah i'm gonna go to cozumel and they're like what <laughs> so it's been it's been pretty insane yeah and the fact that he's still doing it and he's still healthy enough to do it at 100 um, he is an amazing guy Amber says his next goal is clear to live to 101 and break that record again when asked his secret to staying healthy. He says if he knew, he would have sold it already. <laughs> And other good news this morning, engineers in France have created a robot named Pepper that can detect if people are wearing a face mask or not. Good luck, Pepper. Well, Pepper will politely remind those who are maskless they need to cover up. Engineers say Pepper can help shop because uh, shops rather because workers assigned to enforce mask rules can now be free to focus on other things around stores. Interesting. And a strawberry farmer in Wisconsin trying to find a way to cheer people up during these uncertain times. Scott Thompson says he wanted uh, to find a way to make people happy, so he created a sea of flowers by planting more than 2 million sunflowers across 10 different fields. Thompson says there are two more fields that still haven't bloomed yet, so he's expecting sunflower season to last well into the month. And the baby boom at zoos around the country continues. A zoo in New Orleans welcoming a baby lowland gorilla. Staff from the Audubon Zoo says the entire primate area will be closed while mom bonds with the baby. And here in Texas, the Dallas Zoo showing off a litter of three African lion cubs. They were born August 17. The zoo says this is the first litter since way back in 1974. Aww. Look meow. at the video. I know it wasn't. They don't meow though, do they? <laughs> well, the, it looked like it would. It kinda, the, the sound effect was it, appropriate. It matched the video. Yes. 925, <laughs> 77 degrees. There is much more ahead on GMSA at nine, including a brand new Katie Science Lab. Woo! This week, Katie Blake teaches us how to make elephant toothpaste. More than 1,100 Northside ISD teachers applied to work remotely this year, but nearly a quarter of them were denied. The latest defenders investigation is coming up. And as we head to break, a quick check of the roads there is I-10 and Hurman. And of course, we had that accident on 1604 that we were covering all morning. We'll be right back after the break. And welcome back. It's 929. Students at many school districts across San Antonio returned to campus this week for in-person instruction, even as new cases of COVID-19 continue to be added. At Northside ISD, the area's biggest district, nearly a quarter of employees who applied to work remotely this school year were denied. It's not like we don't want to serve our kids. I think that all teachers want to serve their kids. We enjoy the interaction with our kids, but at the same time, we need to have some protection for our own medical and our own health. As Dylan Collier learned in his latest Defenders investigation, it's already been a semester filled with dread for some educators. I can't be the only one going through this. This Harlan High School teacher twice submitted applications to work remotely, only to see Northside Independent School District administrators twice deny her request. First, telling her the anxiety diagnosis she cited did not qualify as a concern for contracting COVID-19. So I said, well, let me submit it under my husband because I know he's got a medical condition. And although his autoimmune disorder surely qualifies. The medication I'm on uh, lowers my immune system. The husband and wife who asked that we conceal their identities received more bad news. They came back and said, oh, we're declining your second request to work from home because it was submitted after the deadline. So the educator made the difficult decision to sit out the next three months and went on medical leave. Her school's principal, Robert Harris, telling her in an email, quote, thank you for informing me of your intent not to serve our students on the first day of school. A district spokesman defending the tone of the email, claiming the sentence was not meant to be offensive, but was intended as acknowledgement of the employee's notice. Well, within the, the interactions that I've had within the past week, I don't want to go back. Like, I would rather do any other job right now than go back to a negative, horrible environment where I feel like I'm just going to be singled out every day. Records provided to us by Northside show that 1,150 employees applied to work remotely this school year and that 278, or 24 percent, were told no. The job can be done from the home. Tom Cummins is president of the Bear County Federation of Teachers, which represents the interests of educators working at multiple San Antonio school districts, such as Northeast ISD, but not Northside. He says the union's position has been clear. 
Returning to in-person learning anywhere in San Antonio was a mistake. For the last six months, students have been at home, not circulating in the community. Now when they're coming out, the incidents are gonna rise. The next few weeks will determine if his prediction is correct. For the Defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Harlan High School teacher tells us district, district officials changed their mind and approved one of her applications to work remotely. She opted instead to go on family medical leave and reassess the COVID situation later this year. And asked about the remote work denials, Northside said in part, quote, in evaluating applications for this waiver, NISD used guidelines established by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for those underlying conditions, placing an individual at higher risk. Employees whose applications were denied had the opportunity to appeal the decision, end quote. More of this is on KSAT.com. Outside with live cam. Wow, we've been waiting for a nice rainy day like this, and uh, but that picture really tells the story, doesn't it, Justin? Yeah, some of those low-hanging clouds. We've had the uh, showers and storms here around San Antonio this morning, although the sun trying to pop out there, I don't think it'll be out for long because we've got more clouds trying to work in from the west and then a big area of rain, showers and storms right along a slow-moving front that will work its way towards San Antonio a little bit later this afternoon. Still seeing some pockets of heavy rain across the hill country as well. Uh, but a little bit of a break in the action here around San Antonio. A couple showers moving through and a couple showers right now up there around Holotus. We are still carrying some warnings, uh, including for uh, Bastrop and Hayes County. That's going to go until 1045. And then this one here for Comal, Gillespie, Kendall and Blanco. That's going to go until 10 a.m. So just about another 30 minutes and a new warning out west. This is going to go until 11 o'clock includes Edwards and Valverde counties. Flash flood watch in effect through 1 p.m. tomorrow. San Antonio off to the north and west. That's the area that will have the best potential for some very heavy rain throughout the course of this evening and tonight. We're calling for a 70 percent chance of rain. Temperatures today in the mid 80s for highs, but cooler tomorrow behind that front. And uh, we'll talk more about the rest of the forecast, including some more rain chances down the line. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, look forward to it. And taking a look at with Transguide this morning, I-37 Houston, I-35 at Laredo. Things running smoothly right now. All right, onward. Uh, question for you. Don't like people looking for some privacy? We have the perfect home for you, located in Buffalo, Texas, which is pretty much smack dab between Houston and Dallas. Yes, and it is underground. Entirely <laughs> underground. Yeah, it's listed on the market now for $2.2 million. Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. It's the structure has no natural light. That's what the listing agent Terry Alexander said, and that the bright color decor, including gigantic wall murals, and vaulted ceilings more than make up for it, though. Yeah, she said, originally, I thought I would be disoriented going into this home. The owner is extremely private, wanted something that was private and secure. The area has storms and tornadoes, and he wanted to build something that would last. Yeah, I would say extremely private. Residents enter the home through what Alexander calls a hobbit hole, a circular entryway built into the hillside that opens into a long hallway, which ends in a small lobby area. Then it opens up into a dining, kitchen, and entertainment area, walls covered with murals and artwork similar to the ones that cover the tunnel and lobby. And Alexander said the unique furnishings in the space can also be given to any future home buyer. Yeah, you can see how colorful it is. Uh, more tunnels led to the other rooms in the house. Overall, the home has three bedrooms and two bathrooms and is about 3,000 square feet. Now, she said she didn't know how far the home is underground, but the rooms have vaulted ceilings 25 feet high. Well, it's not unusual to see homes built in the hillsides in the area. She said this is the first time she had seen that was completely underground. So just a note, there's also some above ground structures on the property, including a garage and two workshops. It's on about 40 acres overall, but again, look for this listing, $2.2 million up in Buffalo. But no natural light. Mm -mm. Can't not a it. window to find. I know. <laughs> for some people, they're okay but with yeah, that. Yeah, not me. 936, 77 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And Katie Blake joins us now <laughs> with a preview of today's Science Lab. Hey, Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Assistant David is back this week, and we're going to put him to work today. We are making elephant toothpaste. I'll explain why it's called elephant toothpaste. No, you don't actually need an elephant for this. The next Katie Science Lab is coming up next. Welcome back this week on Katie Science Lab. We are learning how to make so-called elephant toothpaste. That's right. Katie Blake joins us now with her assistant, our David Sears. Good morning, David. 
Glad to have here. you back. Thank We're going to put you to work this week. So okay. why is it called elephant toothpaste? Yeah, well, why is it called elephant toothpaste? So this Dave? is the container we're using, and we're going to kind of make something that would resemble toothpaste. So this would be, a, I think, a toothpaste tube big enough for an elephant. Ah. Right? Got it. And we won't forget it either. There you go. Correct. <laughs> we're stepping up our game. We got funnels <laughs> off of Amazon. We are ready. So here's what you're going to need. First of all, an empty soda or water bottle. We've got some bigger sizes here. If you want to do the bigger size, that's how you can kind of tell the kids, oh, it's toothpaste for an elephant. You'll need hydrogen peroxide. 3% is fine. Some active yeast, dish soap, warm water, and some food coloring to color your toothpaste. All right. So first thing we're going to do, and something you can do that we've already done, warm water not too hot but not too cold and put your little yeast packet in there and and mix it all up and let that get good and mixed and then that can sit then we're going to put the hydrogen peroxide in the bottle about half a cup or so but you can be kind of generous with this since it's the the three percent and not the six percent if you can find the six percent that'll give you a bigger reaction uh, but you won't need to use as much there Is you go david a half a cup there we're, we're eyeballing it <laughs> <laughs> so you've got your hydrogen peroxide in there, and then you're going to do just a couple squirts of dish soap. That looks like about a half a cup. David with the long pour. <laughs> <laughs> dish soap. Dish soap. And then right. kind of let that mix around. You'll see the bubbles. Much dish soap, a half see a the cup? bubbles from the soap. Yeah, and so that's blue. So that's going to give that's going to give a little bit of coloring. But then you can pick whatever color you want your toothpaste to be. So maybe wow. I'll put in green. So with dish soap, we'll be clean later. <laughs> totally. So you can put in some food coloring if you want to color your toothpaste. Waiting for the final kidding. thing to... <laughs> you got it. You got it. Yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, you're good. You're good. You don't have to wait for it to stop completely. I'll get some red. <laughs> He's a yes. patient guy. <laughs> so let the kids have fun with, you know, the color, whatever color their toothpaste is. See if they can okay. kind of recreate that here. Great job, David. Mix it up. We'll mix it up. <laughs> get it all ready to go. So you saw a cocktail, right, David? Come on. <laughs> there's no, there's no lid I'm on that. A little slow. Be careful. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. There you're doing go. a great job, David. <laughs> Off the top. <laughs> no. So oh. as soon as you put the, the yeast mixture in, that's when the reaction is going to happen. Oh, I guess mm -hmm. we do. We need the funnel. I forgot about that. Ready? Oh, so now the reaction is going to happen? I think you shook too much, but we're good. <laughs> All right, here good we luck, go. Good luck, you guys. Stand back. Oh, look. Oh, oh looky oh. there. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Good job, David. And here comes Come Katie's. On. Come oh, on. Wow. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Look at that. I love it. I love it. There's your toothpaste. Toothpaste fit for an elephant. elephant. Nice. Love that's it. That's more impressive than your volcano, Katie Blake. <laughs> oh, thank wow. you. Yeah, I hope each week we'll just kind of take it up a few, yes. a few notches. Yes, wow. you've raised your wait, game. Wait till October. Got some wow. big stuff planned. Uh, but yeah, this it. is, yeah, and it'll mine's keep still going. bubbly, though. And what David, happens? feel. Why, why is mine kind David, of bubbly? David, feel, feel the bottle. You're going to have to take your gloves off. It's okay. It's not hazardous. Ooh, it's warm. Reaction creates warm. some heat. This is an exothermic reaction, so it releases heat. But don't worry, it's not too hot. The kiddos can touch it. And Write that down. Be exothermic. exothermic reaction. Very yeah. cool. And with your Christmas colors, red and green. Right yeah. <laughs> Great yours job. Is a, yours is like really smooth. It's, still, it's kind of bubbly. David's looks like a Slurpee. <laughs> yours, Katie, looks like guacamole exploded smooth. everywhere. <laughs> I would love that. Taste. Big guac fan. All right, you guys, have fun with this at home. Um, remember to, ta if you do these experiments at home with the kiddos, tag us in your pictures. You can find all of our previous experiments on ksat.com slash kids. Good job, David. And it's it's okay to make a mess, right? Oh, yes. yes. Part of the Please fun. do. Okay. Good job, guys. <laughs> all you need is a toothbrush. <laughs> thank a you. very big toothbrush. Yes. yes that David, was Katie, fun. thank you. Yep. Dr. Thank Blake. you, guys. <laughs> Dr. Blake. Now we go to Dr. Justin. <laughs> That's so thermic. I love it. Yes. David, don't drink any of that. He's not. He <laughs> <Okay>. might. <laughs> no. Well, guys, we, we've had some good rainfall over the last uh, six hours or so. And here's a look at some of the tallies. A at least this is radar estimated here. So we're talking two, three, maybe up to four inches in some cases. Uh, and that was up across Blanco County and the eastern parts of Gillespie County. So that's sort of the bullseye for now. Uh, we're also starting to get some big numbers out west, too. Here around San Antonio, 
not all that much, anywhere from maybe a six tenths up to about seven tenths there on the northwest side. But uh, we still have the opportunity to get more as we go throughout the course of the day. What I'm going to do here is switch this back over to radar and uh, show you what we've got going on right now. Some showers and storms lifting north and uh, everything's uh, moving along. So that's good. We're not looking at too much flooding at the moment, although this little cluster here is moving over an area where we already saw some heavy rain. So still some flash flood warnings in effect again for about another uh, oh, 15 minutes or so there for parts of Kendall, Gillespie and Blanco counties. And then uh, another flash flood warning here that goes until 1045 up and down I-35 San Marcos uh, up towards Kyle and Austin. And then as you get back off to the west, starting to see some of that heavy rain move in around Rock Springs and Del Rio. We've lost our radar site out here, so it doesn't look as as strong as really it probably is. There, there's more rain, especially back out towards the west. We just can't see it so well. But Del Rio, it looks like the front has started to pass you by, and you're getting some good rain this hour, too. Uh, this line, this area of showers and storms, will continue to progress east today uh, with that slow-moving front and give us our rain chances. So here's a look at the future cast. By noontime, still seeing some good downpours around the area and then seeing some activity out west along the front. And I think this will sort of concentrate things as this front comes through. So look for the hill country to be the area where we see some of the heaviest of the rain. But even here around San Antonio, the potential is there as we go into tonight as this uh, front sort of stalls out a little bit and falls apart. By tomorrow morning, we've still got some shower activity around. And it does look like we'll get some of the cooler air here in San Antonio. It's not like uh, the numbers they're seeing out in West Texas where it's 40s and 50s, but we'll probably get highs in the 70s tomorrow. And the rain chances will start to taper off tomorrow afternoon. Flash flood watch in effect that goes through 1 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, it is across the hill country, as we mentioned, where the rainfall will probably be uh, the greatest. And we're talking three to four inches, maybe some isolated totals a little bit higher than that. We've already seen some of those numbers uh, up to four or five inches in some uh, isolated spots here across San Antonio. One to two inches will be common, uh, but we still could see up to three inches, I think. Uh, outside right now, partly to mostly cloudy skies, uh, still seeing a little bit of rain coming down, 77 degrees. East southeasterly winds at about 13 miles per hour. Clouds will fill back in as these uh, storms get a little bit closer. Rock Springs seeing some pretty good rain right now. And as we zoom out, this rain extends all the way up into Oklahoma. Uh, big upper level off to the west that's helping to generate some of this rain along with that front. And what we've done here is uh, put some of the temperatures to show you exactly where this front is. I think it's starting to move through Del Rio, but 59 uh, Snore, 54 in San Angelo, then out ahead of it, you're getting 70s. And the forecast calls for 80s today here around San Antonio, but as that front eases through tomorrow morning, we should see uh, temperatures fall off potentially into the 70s for highs tomorrow will be pretty significant change. So a 70% chance rain highs in the mid 80s today. Look for 77 tomorrow, 40% chance of rain, 20% both Friday and Saturday. But the rain chances come back up Sunday and Monday with another weak front. So rain chances across the board, guys. Good news. Thank you, Justin. 948, 77 degrees. We take a look at today's 9 at 9 next. And welcome back. It's 951. Some good news regarding the coronavirus in San Antonio, but Mayor Ron Nuremberg still warning people to be careful. And get ready for some new Apple products. Here's today's 9 at 9. The final stages of human trials at the University of Oxford are being put on hold because one of their volunteers reportedly suffered a suspected serious adverse reaction. A spokesman for the company developing the drug tells a medical news service that they're now hoping to minimize any potential impact of the trial timeline. We have now entered the dark green stage labeled safe, but Mayor Ron Nuremberg reminds you it's not an excuse to let your guard down. Our positivity rate has dropped to 6.7%. We've had a two-week decline in cases. The Senate unveiling a newly constructed, scaled-down stimulus bill for Americans struggling during the pandemic. Senators expecting to bring the aid package to a vote on Thursday. 2020 is already the worst year for wildfires in California's history. 118,000 acres were burned in 2019 by this time last year. You can see close to just shy of 2.3 million acres have been burned this year. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says he's assigned two veteran prosecutors to review the Marquise Jones case. The meeting comes six years after Jones was shot and killed by an off-duty San Antonio police officer. 
The entire Rochester, New York police command staff is out. Chief Lamont Singletary today announced his retirement along with Commando Morbido. The move coming after a week of protests following Daniel Prude's death in March. The U.S. Justice Department wants to take over the defense of President Donald Trump in a defamation lawsuit. The lawsuit accuses the president of sexual assault in the 1990s. The Justice Department says it should take over because he denied the allegations while he was in office. Luby's looking to liquidate and dissolve the company. Unless a buyer steps forward, its board of directors say the plan will move forward. It's unclear how soon the cafeterias will close. News of Apple's next launch. The tech giant is expected to unveil its new Apple Watch and iPad at an online-only event next Tuesday. Apple says its new 5G iPhones will be delayed due to the pandemic. Good morning. Hey there. Coming up on live, David Muir from World News Tonight joins us. Plus Jessica Alba, and we learn how to organize at home. We'll see you on live. And time saver traffic 90 at General McMullen and last check westbound 1604 still closed up near Stono due to that fatality accident. Uh, we will let you know as soon as things have reopened. Make sure you have your notification set for push alerts from the KSAT app. And the uh, KSAT weather app for that matter will be sending out some more today depending on uh, where these showers and storms line up. But right now the heaviest of the rain out to the west. We could see some more flash flood warnings today. We also have a flash flood watch in effect. For the Hill Country, 70% chance of rain. High temperatures in the 80s today, but cooler tomorrow, 77 for high. Guys, San Antonio's Museum has released their fall lineup. That's right. Uh, they have options for you to do stuff at the museum and then also activities that you could do at home. So uh, the museum, San Antonio's Children's Museum, has announced a variety of programs, intend to offer a wide array of programs, and this is based on STEM concepts in both in-person and online formats. On October 12th, the museum will take part in a new one-day camp model for learners, two separate camps. Take it apart and cardboard pets will focus on maker-centered learning and design for 5 to 7 and 8 to 11 age groups of pizza lunch will be included. And for those looking to camp from home, the museum debuting a virtual slime-tastic science camp recommended for ages 5 to 11 on those same days. So the campers will receive supplies and instructions for a full day of slime fun, which will be provided by curbside pickup. So at three times throughout the day, campers will meet virtually with the museum director our educator, excuse me, to discuss and share their ideas and slime the press release. And then for new for fall 2020, the We Doers, that's music, movement, and messy, September 9th through October 3rd, so starting today. And then we've got Little Artists, October 7th through October 31st, Tinker Time, November 4th through November 21st, and Celebration Science, December 2nd through December 19th. Lots of options, also family workshops and programs for educators as well. More on all of this in the article on KSAT.com. Have a great day.